and welcome to the EEPROM 9. Yes, we've got something a bit different from what we usually do. It's my newly or recently acquired Geiger counter. Nothing in here is crap as it's lights fading outside because it's evening and while well, fluorescent lighting isn't the greatest for brightness. So exactly why do I choose this? Why do I why did I even get it? Because Geiger counters fascinate me and they are just plain awesome. There's nothing uncool about them. <laughs> this particular model is a Plesley is how I pronounce it. P D R M eighty two dosimeter type Geiger counter thing. It's not that clean there's some info on them on the internet. But basically who these were used by, I'll remove the screws and then show you inside. Basically who these were used by was the R O C officers during the Cold War because they originated in World War One to observe for air force planes to observe because the blitz didn't just happen in World War Two. It happened in World War One as well with airships and they were there to detect anything coming overhead and identify it as hostile hostile or friendly. Now throughout World War Two they got branded the Royal Observer Corps Corps because from just Observer Corps because of the work they did in spotting because the radar system we had in World War Two was very directional. It only detected outwards. So in land we relied on these people. But that's not where this comes into play. During the Cold War, loads of posts were set up for the monitoring of a nuclear events. So if a nuke came down, it, these small little bunkers would measure the power of the blast. There'd be a specialist pinhole camera on top that would capture the blast, whether it was a airborne blast or ground blast, measure the force of it and judge the size and of course measure the radiation levels of the fallout. If that, and this is one of the tools I use, there's three models of this, one with F which has an external Geiger tube that goes up to the one to measure it externally from within the bunker and this particular Another one which is similar to this but green, don't know the differences. And this particular model I've got, the one which is green is M and this one's just 82. Now what this is, is for measuring high radiation levels only so you don't pick up background radiation. Whoops, we'll just pop that back on. You get in there. No, it's not having it, so we'll show you inside. Now inside the Geiger counters, it's all computer controlled, microcontroller, 1985. Even the date code of the chips agree with me. Ceramic chip there, we'll bring it in closer. Geiger tube there, only to detect gamma radiation. And of course your batteries there, and various inverter circuits, stuff for the guy Geiger tube cap. I don't know the specifics of how the circuit works, including a nice LED that glows when you switch it on. So if we pop it on, it will go to test and then it will go to zero zero or fail. If it fails, you oh yes, you can see the LED glowing quite brightly on the camera. By any chance, is this an eye off? It's gone to zero zero. Now this can't pick up low level radiation sources. Including anything. 
it can't seem to pick up it doesn't pick up low level radiation so for measuring background it is entirely useless now that basically these would have been used for <coughs> observing the external environment the microcontrollers there, nice LCD which is non multiplexed there micro there and I haven't identified that chip Now these are special in the way they work because they do something that, well, psych counters didn't really do back then. This is able to self-test itself. Now that's just not a circuit test you've got here. That's a full proper test. Because inside the Geiger tube is a sealed beta emitter. It's shielded against beta radiation. Mm it's very minuscule amounts it uses you may have noticed the o-rings too well they well it has this little source that it tests itself against and calibrates to this basically means the meter is able to tell if it's working or not And someone's moving around in the kitchen downstairs. Now, of course, this. <coughs> yeah, we've got a few minutes left. Hang on, I should have probably done this off camera, but who gives a rat's ass? <laughs> I don't. When you turn it on, it will do that, so we'll leave it doing that so you can see it. But this would have been one thing that you take out with you to measure the external radius because they might have lost contact with another station so you go out and survey surrounding areas with this from another post. Now this came box, nice box here, nice and old. This is the strap that goes around your waist, you may have seen it on my last 700 review, PB700 game review type thing and this is your like neck strap which is not particularly comfortable and bare bones basic instructions for bare bones basic easy to use device it is awesome and a piece of history now the iron rings make it at least water resistant if not fully waterproof this means it's pretty tough. The PCB is also EMP hardened which means as long as it's caught in it, not caught in the blast it will survive. As well as shielding from the actual ground environment itself this thing is a pretty rugged military specification device and they do pop up. Uh, I've seen them go for quite a lot on eBay, 50 odd quid, I got mine for about 20 because I didn't want to bid any higher against the bidder who was ahead of me, but for some reason they dropped out, so I was next in line, I was the next highest bidder, so I got it, which was awesome. <coughs> now these were issued in 1985, I'm not sure what they have before this, but it's bare bones basic survey meter. Basically if you pick anything up on this in more normal time, you should probably think about clearing the area. And of course they are very good on the batteries with 400 hour battery life and they don't take any stupid specialist batteries taking standard sort of big ass torch batteries, C cells as they're known. Three of them which is a bit awkward because odd numbers always out with batteries but they always come in fours. But the battery does last a long time. 
Now, why do I have this? Because I love old war memorabilia. I thought a bloody blank shell from some ship's cannon up there on one of my shells. Four gas masks. A plain voltmeter gauge up there. Well, I think it's a voltmeter gauge. I'll show it to you. Come on, Prague. I'm surprised airport security weren't more rigorous on it. It glows in the dark too. I don't think it's one of the ones which is radium because it doesn't glow all night. Uh, I've also got the 1970s walkie talkie, sniper scope um, and probably a few other little bits and pieces here and there that I have forgotten to mention. It now lives on my shelf up there with the gas mask and shell and a light up Cuban star because I like fluorescent lighting yes I like strange things I like strange things but not dodgy things just strange things 